Uh, welcome to this uh, lecture number 19. Uh, so, in this lecture, we will uh, continue with uh, what we started in the previous lecture, the, uh, that is lecture number 18, which is uh, the concept and methods of artificial groundwater recharge. And uh, after completing this, we will move on to uh, recharge mounts and uh, induced recharge. So, first we will continue with this uh, concept of uh, artificial groundwater recharge and uh, here, so the, so basically this artificial groundwater recharge is necessary to supplement, so this is the concept of artificial groundwater recharge. So, here it is to supplement the natural groundwater recharge. which in many cases, many situations may prove to be inadequate. to different degrees so it is just like uh, say for example the the natural lighting which is uh, i'm just giving an analogy the natural lighting is uh, always from uh, dawn to dusk but the human activity has uh, uh, developed are extended to such a level so that even once the uh, uh, the sun has uh, set that means the dusk has uh, the uh, set in so still the human beings the human society and we want to do more uh, uh, work and we want to engage ourselves in more activities so in such cases so we need to go for artificial lighting so this is uh, uh, on a temporal basis and uh, spatially also. So, even in the broad daylight, so some areas, so they may have insufficient uh, lighting. So, in that case, we may have to uh, this is, uh, take uh, the help of artificial lighting. So, similarly, so this uh, there is always this uh, inadequate in different degrees, uh, both spatially and temporally. That means, both space wise as well as time wise, so this natural groundwater recharge may prove to be inadequate. So, this it may be slightly inadequate or it may be significantly inadequate or it may be totally inadequate. So, it all depends upon the actual situation and so therefore, here so, this groundwater recharge and obviously, so this common sense says that, so in areas where there is uh, water logging that means excessive uh, this uh, natural groundwater recharge. So, then there is no question of uh, uh, this uh, necessity of this artificial groundwater recharge. So, with uh, this concept and then, so there are many formulae to estimate the natural groundwater recharge. And uh, so, and of course, uh, once the we estimate the natural groundwater recharge, so we may find that the amount of uh, volume of uh, water which has uh, gone into the uh, that is the subsurface uh, um, uh, spaces, which may be aquifers or it may be uh, 
even uh, wells or it may be any other uh, subsurface storage spaces. So, in that case we have to adopt uh, this artificial ground water recharge and thereby so we improve our uh, water security. So, this uh, so this uh, it improves that is uh, water security stroke availability in general and groundwater security stroke availability in particular. Okay, and uh, so the now let us uh, briefly discuss about the this purposes of this uh, artificial ground water recharge. So, let me abbreviate this as uh, A G W R. So, purposes of uh, artificial ground water recharge. So, the following are the main purposes of artificial ground water recharge. The, the, the first one is to maintain or uh, augment this is the most important this one natural ground water as a resource and this resource it is a economical resource as well as overall resource because uh, there are certain uh, uh, parameters which cannot be quantified economically. So, like uh, say such as the intangible benefits. So, once this uh, um, artificial groundwater recharge is uh, adopted or is employed so, then it will also result in other intangible benefits like improvement in flora, fauna and uh, other things. So, which all of which may not be able may not be quantified. So, second uh, uh, purpose is to to coordinate the operation of surface strokes subsurface reservoirs okay so this is the second purpose of artificial groundwater recharge and then uh, thirdly the third purpose of artificial groundwater recharge is to that is uh, to overcome adverse conditions adverse uh, conditions like uh, progressive lowering of uh, ground water level unfavorable or unfavorable or undesirable salt or uh, salinity balance. in water this 
So, it which includes the salt water intrusion also or salinity intrusion also or say the brackish water intrusion. So, this is the third purpose and uh, the next one is to provide additional subsurface storage for uh, local or uh, imported surface water. So, once we have this uh, uh, once we employ this artificial ground water recharge, so then it provides an additional uh, storage, additional uh, reservoir, subsurface reservoir which can be used for, so uh, which can be used either locally or which can be it can be transported over uh, short or medium or uh, uh, long distance. So, to meet the, uh, the uh, appropriate water use. So, next is this is a to reduce or stop completely stop subsidence of land significantly. See here, so once this uh, artificial groundwater recharge is adopted, so it will improve the soil balance that is I am sorry the moisture content in the soil and thereby, so it will improve the strength of the soil. So, it will uh, it will be less susceptible for uh, erosion. So, therefore, and uh, not only this, uh, this one and also what happens is uh, it will be uh, it will be less susceptible for uh, subsidence and like uh, the foundation and all. So, it is uh, the foundation that is uh, uh, settlement of foundations. Okay. So, unequal settlement or it can be even uh, totally uh, that is almost uh, uh, it is uh, total settlement in uh, all the areas. So, such uh, which results in uh, land subsidence. So, that can be reduced or uh, stopped. Uh, completely. So, that is this one and then so the next purpose is to provide locally subsurface distribution system. So, this is subsurface water distribution, subsurface water means basically ground water distribution system through established or uh, newly constructed wells. So, here so we will uh, ensure that so there is uh, an adequate supply of uh, subsurface water and the additional adequate supply of uh, subsurface water which can be harnessed through either uh, this already established uh, wells or uh, existing wells or uh, newly constructed wells. So, then, then so this is the sixth purpose and then next is to provide treatment stroke storage for uh, reclaimed waste water. for uh, 
subsequent partial or total reuse. It is said that the solution to pollution is uh, dilution. So therefore, so this uh, waste water when it is reclaimed, so there the artificially recharged ground water what it does is it will ensure that the uh, that is uh, uh, the reclaimed waste water is further diluted and uh, so thereby the concentration of the pollutants in the uh, waste water is uh, further minimized and many times it may be within the permissible limits or uh, it may be even uh, almost uh, be ready, much below the permissible limits. So, in such cases it can be um, uh, used either for partial reuse or uh, total reuse. So, here in this case I, I can give an example of this uh, new water. So, basically in Singapore wherein so some fraction may be 5 percent or say 10 percent of the uh, the water which is being supplied is uh, added with uh, uh, such treated uh, uh, reclaimed waste water. So, and then so that is this one and then lastly the to conserve or extract energy. in the form of hot or cold water. So, here we know that the there is always an optimum depth below ground where the temperature variation is minimum and uh, we can uh, use this utilize this fact to our advantage and then so we can create a a reservoir through this artificial ground water recharge you can create a reservoir. So, which may be uh, of uh, great help especially in winters and which is also known as a passive air conditioning technology and uh, so or in uh, summer when it is too hot. So, that time so it may provide a, it may be able to provide water which is uh, significantly uh, colder than the extreme summer temperature. So, all this can be so that can be so we can utilize the uh, the that is the um, uh, the ground as a, uh, a reservoir or a insulator wherein so this temperature can be so when temperature variation can be reduced. So, these are say, the purposes and uh, so and uh, based on these purposes the concept of artificial ground water recharge is uh, uh, hinged, hinged upon. So, now we will go to the methods of artificial ground water recharge, methods of AGWR. So, that is artificial ground water recharge. So, there are various methods for this artificial uh, ground water recharge. So, let us list these methods and then briefly uh, discuss uh, one by one. The first one is the basin method. So, this is followed by stream channel method. And then the third method is this ditch and furrow method. Then there is a flooding method. Fifth one is the irrigation method, and 
and the the next one I am writing here that is the pit method. Then lastly this is a uh, here let me write here only the recharge well method. So, these are the seven methods of uh, which are generally uh, used for uh, artificial ground water recharge. So, now we will briefly discuss these methods and uh, And these methods are uh, the names of these methods, the titles of these uh, methods of artificial ground water recharge are uh, self explanatory. Now, first let us go to this uh, basin method, basin method of artificial ground water recharge. I am extensively using the abbreviation AGWR which uh, is artificial ground water recharge. And here this case say basically what is done is see whenever there is an excess supply of uh, surface water. So, this uh, surface water is uh, stored in a basin which is uh, in the vicinity of the uh, stream or a water body and in this case say for example, say suppose this is a there is a stream say suppose there is a, a stream and uh, let us consider the for uh, let us say the flow is from uh, right to left in the stream and here what this uh, basin method does is, so ad, an additional basin is created and uh, So, this is the, the stream or river and then this is the diversion structure so it could be a small weir or a barrage and uh, here So, this is a, so this is the in, intake structure and uh, here this is a sediment retention basin or which is simply known as sedimentation basin. And followed by, so this is a, so these are a, let us uh, denote this as a B and here, so that is a
like this. So, this is uh, these are A. So, here this A represents a recharge recharge basin and this B represents that is the inter basin control structure. Control or regulating structure. So, this is the, the a typical plan or say top view of a multiple basin artificial ground water recharge scheme. So, it will be like this. So, basically, so here what happens is, so the this is uh, it is in the same direction. So, initially there is an in diversion structure which will create to which will uh, augment the head and then so the water is diverted through the intake structure and then from the intake structure it passes through the sediment retention or sedimentation basin and then so there is uh, the intubation control structure so here by closing this bottom one that is the the below one we can ensure that so these top 3 uh, recharge basins can be uh, recharge and uh, similarly if we close the top one so this one we can uh, ensure that so there is recharge only in this bottom three uh, recharge basins so like that so this is the basin method so in which the the area which is uh, in and around the water body such as a stream okay wherein it is feasible uh, topographically as well so it can be employed and uh, so here uh, this will induce so because of this large area of the basin so the flow velocity of water is significantly reduced and then so therefore it will uh, result in this uh, uh, it will induce artificial groundwater recharge by significantly through infiltration so initially the the top uh, aquifer that is the unconfined aquifer is uh, getting recharged and then again uh, this uh, uh, subsequently it also uh, results in the recharge of uh, lower uh, confined aquifers of course and if you want to further increase its as one so then obviously we have to use appropriate techniques so that it can be done so this is the basin method which is the first method of uh, artificial groundwater recharge so now let us go on to the second method which is the stream channel method and of course in this case the uh, So, here let me, so the second is the stream channel method of AGWR. So, here, so what is done is uh, suppose, so this is the top view of a stream in this case a check dam may be constructed along the so this could be so this is a stream and then this is a
So this is a, a rock and wire uh, check dam. So this is basically here you can uh, this is a, so that is it is a dry rubble masonry. So here what happens is this dry rubble masonry which is uh, uh, which is which forms what is known as a check dam. So is constructed across the length of a stream or a river and uh, what it does is so initially it will uh, the, the all the finer sediment particles which otherwise would have uh, flown along with the, the stream water okay. So these uh, are uh, uh, trapped so their velocity is uh, significantly reduced and then so these finer sediment particles so they basically uh, get deposited in the uh, that is the intermolecular spaces or say that is in the interstices of the uh, this uh, dry rubble masonry and then so what happens is so this is initially it will uh, start as a soil conservation measure and then it also conserves uh, water and then eventually it will conserve vegetation also. So which are the three important uh, parameters uh, to be conserved in integrated watershed management. So therefore, so the stream channel method in this what happens is, so this is the uh, say suppose this is the say the here let me show this is the this is the original extent of uh, stream channel and then the improved extent so because of this uh, construction of this uh, dry rubble masonry and all so what happens is so the this will be there will be an additional storage of water so this is the so here uh, so this is the improved extent of stream channel storage after this artificial ground water recharge and here so this is the original extent of uh, stream channel. So this is the original extent of stream channel storage. Okay, so this is the uh, the second method of uh, artificial groundwater recharge, uh, which is the stream channel method. And now let us go to the third method, that is the ditch and furrow method. So this is the third is the ditch and furrow method of AGWR. So in this what is done is, so this is uh, ditches and furrows are uh, created so that say this is the suppose if this is the original land profile so this is the so here uh, this so here uh, certain furrows 
So, these are the furrows and then so this is a maybe some this uh, ditches also. Okay, so these are the ditches. This, this, as well as this, and then so these are the furrows. So they are all uh, basically this earthen uh, one, or uh, they may also have this one. So these are the furrows. So the new So this is the the this is the modified land profile. So by creating this uh, ditches and furrows, so we are going to increase the water retaining capacity or water withholding capacity, and which will eventually result in artificial ground water recharge. So, this is the third method and uh, so the fourth one is uh, the flooding method so here it is uh, self explanatory so in this case is simply water is allowed to flood so the uh, the precipitation water allowed to to flood along the surface at the desired location or locations such that there is no mosquito so that means it is also known as a vector uh, problem mosquito menace problem okay so by doing this so that is uh, we may adopt various methods so that flooding is there but at the same time so there is no uh, growth of uh, mosquitoes and uh, undesirable organisms and uh, so therefore so this is once this is uh, the water is allowed to flood so then it, it automatically it will uh, recharge that will flow by gravity in the vertically downward direction and then thereby this uh, artificial ground water recharge is uh, achieved so next is that is the irrigation method so here also it is self explanatory so in this case so what is done is that is a so this is a crops are excessively irrigated so that they can overcome
this uh, crop selection so that they, they can overcome the water shortage problem in the near future and also better utilize the existing excess availability of uh, precipitation water or say rain water or uh, precipitation water. So, this is the irrigation method and of course, so once the excess uh, water is allowed, so then so this so we may reduce the irrigation freq uh, this uh, frequency and then we may even go for this uh, deficit irrigation. So, that uh, even if there is a slight uh, delay in the monsoon or this one, so the uh, this uh, the plants are self sufficient to overcome that situation because of the uh, that is the already uh, achieved uh, uh, this one that is uh, um, what I should say the because they already achieved uh, um, that water availability. So, this is the fifth uh, one and then uh, lastly, so there is a pit method. So, this uh, this pit method is also so that is the sixth one is the pit method of AGWR. So, this is self explanatory. So, this uh, pits of appropriate sizes size stroke shape are dug at uh, suitable locations wherein excess water can get stored and bring about and say eventually bring about artificial ground water recharge. So, this is the pit method. Okay. So, these are the six methods of uh, artificial ground water recharge and of course, uh, this is the these are not exclusive. So, we may adopt any new method uh, which may be uh, this artificial ground water recharge. So, to give one simple example, so I can uh, mention here, so that is uh, uh, this is, uh, so this uh, the terminology of rain water harvesting is very popular these days and of course, so this rain water harvesting is essentially it is also one form of artificial ground water recharge and in this case I am uh, I would like to bring it to the notice of uh, this one uh, of the fact that a village lady that is uh, in uh, an interior uh, coastal uh, the rather in coastal Karnataka near uh, the town of Mangalore. So, she uses her old saris uh, and uh, so this she spreads these old saris around this one and then so the coastal area which is having a, a, a relatively large amount of humidity. So, the this uh, water the the humid water it gets uh, this one and then eventually, so there will be condensation of this humid water and then so she gets uh, maybe some amount of maybe uh, few liters depending upon the size of the her uh, sari and all that as well as thickness of as well as the material. So, she gets this one. So, like that, 
So, the uh, this uh, she bring about she uh, and that is uh, harvest or uh, the the locally available excel mo ex uh, excess moisture and uh, ok. So, with this uh, they will uh, uh, complete this one and now we will go to what are known as the recharge mounts. So, these recharge mounts are essentially the mounts or humps which are created by artificial ground water recharge. So, these are uh, here you can write down. So, these are the mounts the humps or mounds so these are the humps or mounds created by this artificial ground water recharge carried out on a sustained basis and uh, here let me draw the a typical uh, uh, this one the cross section as well as a uh, And in this case say for example, say suppose this is the so this is the ground surface and uh, here say suppose this is the square recharge basin and uh, here this is a uh, uh, here this is a, a regular shaped so which in most of the cases may be uh, recharge basin square and uh, here what happens is so that is uh, say suppose So, this is the here you can say the average length of uh, this one is uh, A the regular shaped recharge basin. So, let me just uh, differentiate So, here what happens is, so this is the, the initial water table so this is the original water table or piezometric surface let me write this as And then because of the storage of this uh, water in this uh, recharge basin, so here what happens is, so it will form a mound here. Okay, so this is the, so this is the water table during or uh, 
during stroke after artificial ground water recharge. So, therefore, this is the, the recharge mound is created here uh, because of this uh, uh, the recharge in a regular shaped basin. Then so this is a so this is a a typical recharge mount then we will go for this is uh, the induced recharge and in this case anyway I think we will uh, stop here and we will continue with the induced recharge in the next lecture and uh, so, uh, so. Okay. so thank you.